Thanks, PK. Hey, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Um, looking back at our players of the game, offensively, Flynn Nagel, you know, spectacular game, 220 yards, third most in program history. I mean, absolutely spectacular performance by him. Big playmaker was Clayton, um, you know, 455 yards passing, three touchdowns. Uh, I think he's now in the top 10 in career passing yards in the Big Ten. And, and uh, you know, we needed it, and I thought he played great, especially – down to stretch defensively was Trey Williams, best tackling performance of the of the year for him. He had a huge tackle in overtime on that third down play in space, and obviously the huge uh, strip sack uh, that uh, Ernest recovered for a touchdown. Our big playmaker on defense was J.R. Pace, two interceptions in our own end zone were huge plays in that game. Our special teams or our specialist of the week was Drew Luckenbaugh for obvious reasons. Uh, Ray Nairo, A.J. Hampton, and, and Braden Heald were our practice players of the week. Um, you know, looking looking back, it was a great team win. We found a way to get it done. And I thought the guys came ready to learn and grow this morning. We obviously have a lot to clean up and fix and get to work on here this week. Uh, and we started on that this morning. So with that, how about some questions, please? A couple uh, things in the two deep that nah. changed. No, but I, 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 don't I, even, I don't even do that. So Paul does that. Uh, OK, Paul he does it? Paul afterwards. Okay, I'll, I'll ask Paul afterwards then. All right, a different question then. Um, Travis Willick saw the field, I think, for the first time in his Northwestern career on Saturday. What can you say about his kind of journey getting back on the field? It's been a long road. I think he's an outstanding football player, and uh, it's just been a long road battling injuries. And um, great to have him out there. I think he's a heck of a football player. How did the uh, O-line grade out? Uh, 1-0. We won. Update on John Moten's health or availability this week? Nope. How you mentioned Jesse Brown coming back soon. Is there a timetable for when that might happen? Uh, he practiced today, so we'll see. Um, and then with sort of different vein, uh, are there any other players besides Bowser and Drake Anderson that have appeared some, but you're trying to get under that the new red shirt rule and keep them to four games or less? Um, yeah, maybe a couple of other guys, um, of which will be nameless. What do you, how do you think the, what are your thoughts on the red shirt rule? Do you think it's, uh, oh, it's awesome. Good. Yeah, it's terrific. I wish it was around when I was playing. I was the best, worst freshman in the country and I played in like eight games and was terrible. I would have liked to play in four and maybe got a graduate degree if I was good enough to get a fifth year. So. I think it's a great rule. I think it gives us access to our entire roster. I think the Big Ten made it the right move, allowing us to travel from 70 to 74 to start the year. I think that's something that should be reevaluated, and we should be able to take more guys. There's no reason. I mean, I watch our basketball team, and it's nothing against Chris, but the basketball takes, like, everybody. Like, the third nutritionist gets to go, too. I mean, it's crazy. And we got 112 guys in the team, and 40-plus have got to stay home. That doesn't make sense to me. But uh, we don't make those rules. We just got to play by them. So, yeah, I think it's an outstanding rule. Absolutely terrific. It's long overdue. And you mentioned Saturday that you're playing the game with it with the two mm -hmm. running backs. Do you make that decision before Saturday? Is that sort of an in-game decision as the game goes along? Yeah, well, we're getting to a point with Isaiah, you know, that he's got probably, you know, one more, and then he burns the year, and we'll see how it plays out based on the health of the, of the room, and then, you know, Drake's got a minimum of three more that he can play in, and, you know, we'll see how that all plays out. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, we talk about all those things, Skip. I mean, we talk about everything. You know, you, there's nothing just Saturday morning we wake up and go, eh, let's give him a shot. Yeah, I wish you, I wish we could, uh, but that's – nobody's good enough at college to be able to do that. So, yeah, it's, it's all thought out, and we, we have a plan, and then, like any game, you always have to plan to adjust. So – Clayton had another huge game on Saturday. Can you talk about his development to the point where he's able to throw 64 times, lead that drive at the end of the game? Well, he's a great player. Um, you know, the, you want to talk about a relentless work ethic, it's him. You know, coming back off the injury that he had uh, to be able to play in the opener to now just each week get stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, you know, I, I think the performances just speak for themselves. You know, you – you know, from somebody that, that uh, came off an injury and then probably 
look back in the rearview mirror, my first month, my senior year, was probably not the best football I played as a starter. And then kind of after that first month, you know, if not more than anything, just the confidence is back. Um, you know, the injury creates a, a, a new feeling in your body on how you're going to respond. And, you know, probably after a month of playing, that's, that now becomes the new normal. You know, but for him, his, his offseason wasn't, you know, getting on the squat rack and, and, and setting personal records. It was getting functional mobility and getting enough quad strength to be able to, you know, make sure that he's healthy and safe. And so now he's finally able to get back in the weight room. And, you know, you think about him this time next year, uh, it's, in my opinion, scary how good he's going to be. You know, I think he's going to play this game for a long, long time. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just so proud of how hard he's worked and the, the job he's doing leading and who he is as a person. The play speaks for itself, but it's much deeper than that with Clayton and uh, a lot of our guys. But I'm, I'm very, very proud of him. He's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Where do you see the result on the field? Uh, 455 yards, you know? I mean, it, well, no. I mean, I, quarterback play obviously is between your ears and from the foundation, from the, from the, from the floor up, from, you know, from the ground up. And, you could see in the Purdue game, wasn't able to really drive off that surgical leg and things of that nature. Everything was all upper body, all torque. That all plays into it too. His core strength has always been great. He's never, I don't think I've ever heard him complain about anything upper body. So he does a great job lower body mechanically uh, to be able to have the arm component be the final piece. Not, you know, you see some guys just throw all arm. They come out after a game and they're iced up like a, like a major league pitcher. You know, he may put ice on just for maintenance, but I have never, he's never been on any injury report that I've gotten for anything upper body. So, uh, you know, he, he's got just, I think, outstanding fundamentals. But, you know, from a standpoint of the lower body strength, you know, you just see that getting better each week. Flynn won Offensive Player of the Week for the Big Ten. Um, obviously had a huge game. Can you talk about his development and getting to this point where he's able to have this successful of a season? Yeah, similar to Clayton with work ethic. You know, South Side guy, great family. Uh, like third Nagel, I've had the privilege to coach. His parents are great. You know, he's got other siblings too that didn't play football here for us. So uh, he's just worked incredibly hard. And, um, you know, it, it typically success comes to those that do that. And, uh, you know, again, like Clayton, just really proud of, the, of who he is as a person. He's got a bright future, but, uh, you know, I think he's putting himself in position now to play football you know, beyond Saturdays, and that's that's awesome for him. And then do you have an update on the kicking situation, what it'll look like, Charlie's injury, and even if, if he does come back with Drew? No. I think two years ago when you took him off the punt return team, didn't he have something like a crisis of confidence, for lack of a better word, that he had to sort of come back from? Um, yeah, I don't know about that. Um, I, you know, I think just things maybe weren't clicking. Um, and, you know, it's, it's tough when it's not clicking. I don't, I don't know if I'd call it a crisis of confidence. I think it's just growth. I think just opportunity as a young player, um, when things don't go the way you want them to go, you got to fight through it. You got to battle through it. And, and he's, I think the results where we're seeing now are, the, are the, how he fought through that, 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 that time. So you know, credit goes to him. And it's like every guy, it's not a yellow brick road in college athletics, especially college football, and he's fought through it. Proud of him. He said Saturday that he learned from his brother's mistakes, that his brothers had injuries hmm. and didn't, come, didn't fight through them, and there were times hmm. when he was ready to give up, and, but talking to the brothers got him through. That's pretty cool. Did you, were you aware of that? Or? No, thanks for the education. I have no idea, but I'm not surprised. I mean, it's a great family. I'm not surprised hmm. that his brothers were there for him, you know. I, that's... I didn't have brothers, so congratulations, Flynn. Just since we're on Flynn, he had committed to Duke. And how did it come down that uh, he ended up here? We had a scholarship come available late, and you know, reached out to his high school coach and told him, "We have a scholarship. We know he's committed. We have a scholarship. You need to talk to the young man and his family and see if we're a school that he would reconsider." If not, we won't reach out to him. Um, we respect guys' commitments. That's why we go through the high school coach first. Pretty quickly after that phone call, we got communication that he was interested and asked the coach to have them call me. And I, I said, listen, don't be upset at me that this opportunity is happening now, but it is. Um, 
I hope you trust me. I hope you know what direction we have for you. We ask you to call Duke and decommit. And if that's something that you want to do, when you do that, then we'll have a scholarship here for you. Um, if you don't want to, we get it, and we'll move on and, and move in a different direction. So outside of press conferences, I'm usually pretty transparent. So press conference information, that's none of your business, but that's okay. Um, I love you all. In the, being honest, being transparent. In the game this past Saturday, there was a, there was a situation where Coach Frost had, they had a fourth and inches at their own 43, and they ended up punting. I think they were up seven. Um, how would you have handled that situation, Wade? Uh, I think there was about 11 minutes left in the game, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, I don't think that that's late. Uh, I think, yeah, there was a lot of ball left to be played. Um, you know, we go through a bunch of different scenarios during the week and talk about what we would do and how we would do things. Um, you know, at that point, we weren't moving the ball great. So I would say based on if I were to flip the decision making, I, I understand exactly why he did what he did. And, um, you know, we were just fortunate. I mean, to go 99 yards without any timeouts, it, the drive after those couple, you know, that, that takes a lot of luck, but it also takes great call and a great execution. I thought our guys did a great job of that. And then, um, sorry, forgot my question. Oh, yeah. So going back to Flynn, um, defense is probably going to start to key on him. Already saw it a little bit with Nebraska as Thorson went to him back over and over and over again in the, in the crunch time situations. How do you work off of that when he's the one who's continuously getting the ball in those big spots? Just hide him. Yeah. Halloween coming up. We'll hide him. Uh, Rutgers going through another rough season. What have you seen on tape from them? What do you think has been the cause of their problems? Well, I mean, again, it's it's uh, you, Chris takes over a program that he's got to rebuild, and they're in, they're in that process, and that's that's exactly what it is. It's a process, and you know, year one of, of that type of change is really really difficult. You know, you show up as the head coach, and you know, maybe you know apples meant one thing the day before, and now apples mean something different, and it, it's a process to work through that year one, and then. You know, he's two years into having a couple of recruiting classes, and you can see that the older guys have – looks to us like they're buying in and getting much better, and the young guys are incredibly talented, uh, and they're making plays all over the place. I mean, Blackshear jumps off tape. He's one of the best backs in the Big Ten. They're moving him all over the place. They target him a bunch. I really like the receiving core and tight ends. They use those guys in a lot of different ways. Defensively, they're very multiple up front. They've got great team speed, and they're very athletic, and they're playing a lot of their starters in the kicking game, and it's showing up. I thought they, outside of the one kickoff return into the win that obviously didn't go the way they wanted it to on Saturday, you see a, a group of guys that are fighting to get better. And, you know, you listen to what Chris has to say, and that's what they're doing. They're sticking together, and they're fighting to get better, and that's what I told the squad this morning. This team reminds me a lot of Nebraska from a standpoint that they're getting better. They're maybe not getting the results on the field, but you can see them improving. And they just had a tough one on Saturday. The amount of turnovers, it's hard to overcome that. Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, we know we're going to get their A game and they're going to play, I think, a great game against us because they're, number one, they're, I'm sure they're disappointed with their outcome on Saturday. And two, they're well coached and they're very talented. So uh, we're going to have our hands full just like we do every game. I mean, this is uh, Big Ten football, man. You got to play 60 minutes or whatever it takes. And we'll expect to have to do that on Saturday. Is there something extra you have to do in situations like these when the team can see these big games coming up on the horizon with Wisconsin and Notre Dame coming up right after this Rutgers game to kind of keep them focused on, on, the, on the game this Saturday, or is it just the same every week? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, – I, I think as a fan, it's probably a, a, a typical question, right, from a standpoint of, you know, uh, there's probably – I've been here 13 years, can go over, overanalyze and psychobabalize all kinds of stuff. We, we stay very consistent with how we approach things here. It's a one and zero approach each week. The way we talk about how we go about consistently preparing what we have to do today, um, you know, we we have, we have a very specific routine that we go through. And you know, to me, we we're not playing very well right now. We're not playing very consistent football. And you know, my biggest concern is us. We we've got to get better up front on both sides of the ball. We've got to tackle better. We've got, we've got to find a way to establish a, some semblance of a run, rushing attack. Um, we've got to continue to take care of the football and continue to play with great discipline, which I'm very proud of the guys that they've exhibited at this point halfway through the season. 
we've got to start to do some things in the kicking game beyond, you know, amazing kicks <laughs> that Drew had on Saturday. We, we've got to, we've been very close, uh, but we, we've got to execute cleaner. There's some things that we got to clean up big time from Saturday uh, in the kicking game. So we got a lot of work to do. So my focus is, is and will always be on us. We expect, especially in Big Ten football games, that we're going to get a very well-coached, you know, very talented team, no matter who we play. And like we knew what we were getting into on Saturday. The, the record for Nebraska doesn't matter, and either does the record for Rutgers. Every game is at one game season, and that's all we focus on is going one and zero. So, the rest of the stuff is for that week when it comes up. Anything else for Cole? Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful day. Go Cats.